Uh, we're going to kick this off with the main man, Omar. Give him a round of applause. Okay. All right, guys. How's everyone doing? Hope you guys are excited to geek out about all things Framer. Yes. Sweet. All right. So look, my talk is about a one-year review since moving to Framer and how it's impacted our operations, SEO, and marketing. Quick intro about myself. My name is Omar Farouk. I'm a designer turned startup founder. My startup is a VC-backed uh, graphic design tool built for e-commerce business owners. I'm also a part-time creator on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. I share stuff about sort of behind the scenes of building my startups, uh, workflows, the tools we use, the products we love. So if you're interested in all this stuff, then do find me. Story time, our journey. Let's dive in. So last year, we moved to Framer. This was originally Glorify's website, which was a Webflow website. 300 plus pages, including blog articles that generates close to 50,000 unique visitors on the website month over month. 10% of this converts to free signups on our application. Uh, it's a big and tough decision, no doubt. This is our company's lifeline, right? And the main reason we moved was because we had built this thesis that Framer was going to make us way more efficient and deliver better results in terms of web design. And as you can see from this top level stats, as with any company, no doubt, the website is a huge pillar for your ac customer acquisition flow. But this wasn't an easy conversation to have with our board because we have a history of hopping from web builders to web builders. 2018, we launched uh, on ClickFunnels. It's a sort of easy to use web builder, very basics of sort of like generating initial sales and getting out to market. We then, in 2020, we decided we wanted to launch some more sort of like richer content and start getting our SEO game uh, on the run. And so we moved to WordPress, right? Industry standard. It was bloated with plugins. It's super slow. So of course, 2021 comes along and everyone is talking about Webflow. I mean, people have been talking about Webflow for a while by then. Uh, all the big boys in the design space were definitely raving about it. And so we decided to move to Webflow. Uh, and yes, this was an improvement. It was definitely, we're definitely shipping pages faster. Uh, you know, we were able to get things way more pixel accurate for sure, until we tried Framer. <laughs> so we did move to Framer in 2022, 23. That's a different story. We'll get back to that in a moment. And no plans to change, I hope, after that. Um, and look, yes, I am a designer at first. And so I do have a bit of shiny object syndrome. Uh, but look, the struggle is real. Like all these tools, we saw these these blended issues, at least for us as a startup, a like friction using the tools. We always found that it felt like the tools are fighting against us versus serving us. Uh, we found that the tools had a steep learning curve. It was very a struggle to sort of onboard our team members to take full ownership of it. Uh, we also got lost in overkill workflows. It just seemed to take forever to get anything done. Uh, and finally, pixel accuracy is a chore. Most of us are designers in our team. And you just couldn't seem to get everything exactly how we wanted it as in with designers. We wanted it to look exactly like our Figma design, but it was a chore. It was not easy to get that result. Uh, and as a result of all of this, we kept relying on contractors. And now as a startup, that's not easy. Cash is limited. It's really important to take full ownership of these things, especially as uh, something as important as your website, no doubt. So we always sort of fantasize about this idea, you know, is there a better way? And I think this idea went back all the way back to 2018 when we first started using Figma. We moved from Sketch to Figma. Uh, and this idea of, you know, you can design something on Figma, prototype it, get a fully interactable, in, interactive website, throw it on the browser, and it feels like a real website, right? And wouldn't it be so cool if you click that publish button and it actually became a real website, right? And that was the dream. And, and we thought that maybe one day, right? Maybe one day. Lo and behold, 2022, Framer Sites launches on Product Hunt. And I was like, wow, this is cool. We already knew Framer as a prototyping tool, but we never used them at the time. I think what stuck out to me the most was how freaking cool that logo is. It's probably the most badass logo I've ever seen, honestly. Uh, and yeah, so. When the launch happened, I was a bit skeptical at first. This is a bit of a pivot, to be honest. But you know, honestly, I didn't have high expectations. It's a new pivot. Maybe it's going to be sort of beta-ish. Uh, so, but you know, I thought, why not give it a give it a spin? What piqued my interest was that they had a Figma paste plugin, and that was really interesting to me. So, 
used the Figma paste plugin on one of our landing pages on Figma, copied, pasted on Framer. Wow, okay, we got the whole site on there, the frames are there, everything's there as it should be. Did it open up the breakpoints, tablet, mobile, did a bit of responsive work, hit publish. That thing is on the internet, right? It's beautiful. It's a game changer. Now, of course, you know, before we, you know, fully migrated, we wanted to run some tests. So in 2022 comes along, we started sort of taking um, Framer on some trial runs, you know, just landing sort of low key landing pages. We often do deal campaigns for our startup. Black Friday was around the corner, so we thought, why not throw up a landing page with Framer on a subdomain? So the Webflow site still existed, and we, we launched this on Black Friday. Uh, and normally the typical timeline would be two weeks to launch a landing page, but with Framer, it took us two days, which was insane, and 85% faster because of a design-led workflow. And I think what was really interesting as well was the response from our design team. The designers had finally had the confidence to onboard themselves and you know, without necessarily going through like a steep le learning curve. Uh, and finally, we're starting to see that ownership. But now, before we went all in, look, I didn't want to go to our VC, our board, our board and you know, pitch this idea of moving web builders again, right, with our history of moving web builders. Uh, and it was going to be the same pitch that I made back when, I was, when we moved from WordPress to Webflow, which is we're going to be able to ship sites faster. We're going to be uh, you know, building better websites that convert better. Uh, and so I didn't want to be that guy that, you know, Omar just cares more about pixel pushing versus actually growing a company. So super risky decision. We had to you know, really sort of look at all the potential you know, unknowns. One of them was the ability to get crawled by Google. Number two, the CMS scalability. Number three, the page load speed. Before we, you know, we had to iron out these details before we go full in. And of course, the Framer team had all the answers. Well, that's coming from the horse's mouth, of course, no doubt. But they gave great answers. Ability to get called by Google. The code base is recognizable by Google for indexing. Plus, they have real-time sitemap updates on every publish, which is ideal. So anything, any update you make, whether it's a title, meta tags, descriptions, any content on the website, you hit publish, it's live. Uh, and you get the real-time update. Plus, the CMS was scalable. We have 300 plus blogs had all the features we needed in terms of the custom fields, the meta titles, the alt text, et cetera. Plus they had CSV import at the time, which was really powerful for us because we didn't want to move you know, 300 blogs manually. Blog by blog would be an operational nightmare. Uh, and finally, page load speed. Safe Framer has server-side rendering for lightning fast road load times. Essentially what this means is that they pre-render the website before delivering it to you, which results in lightning fast load times and plus they have reliable built-in hosting, but you know, the company is no doubt going to say the best things about their product, right? They're going to say Frame is the best thing since sliced bread. But what was interesting is that all of this actually tied into our first-hand experience with Framer. We'd already been using Framer for a couple of weeks, uh, actually a couple of months by then, and we already knew that if you publish the site, it goes live in seconds, right? It was blazing fast. Um, you know, if we did a bit of basic Google indexing work on Google Search Console, we would find our website uh, on Google search results. So all these things, just you know, what Framer said, just only reconfirmed our belief. Plus, on top of that, all these brilliant companies that we know, love, and respect were also making the shift. So you know what? It was, it was becoming almost like a no-brainer to us. So May 2023, the stars were aligned. We spoke to the board. We got a board approval. We started to migrate. The migration, now this is something I would say, if you are gonna make the move, there's never enough preparation that you can do. I'll say that nine times out of 10, when it comes to sort of moving all these elements, SEO will suffer to a degree at least. Uh, and this is what you know, the sort of high level checklist looks like, typically it looks like when you're doing a migration, so, uh, you know, rec making a record of the structure, content accuracy, your external links, your load speed, setting up your canonical URLs and redirects, we had all of this watertight, but it's never enough. So at some point, you just had to pull the trigger. Um, we did the migration and you know, threw in a website redesign in the process as well. Why not? Because we know that you know, we need a web website redesign, right? It's going to definitely get that next phase of growth. 
uh, and three weeks to go live from Figma, which was mind blowing, by the way, because prior to that, from WordPress to Webflow, that took us three months. So it's insane speed, right? And this is a yeah, fully fledged SaaS website. We migrated. Traffic plummeted by 50%. Bit high for what we hoped, but it was mainly due to a few sort of website optimization is issues. Um, you know, the site, some of the pages weren't getting indexed properly. Uh, and the cool thing was Framer were really supportive and helped us sort of iron out those technical issues. We fixed them, and before we know it, indexing went back to normal. So let's talk about the impacts, and I'll end there. Uh, SEO impacts, number one, traffic rebounded two months after fixing errors. We maintained sort of the 50,000 uh, traffic that we already had with minimal new content. We had a bit of a team downscale at the time, so you know, we w couldn't publish as much, but it was great to see that same traffic being maintained. Uh, on top of that, top level Lighthouse scores is quite easy to reach with Framer. Now, operation is really where I saw the results as a startup founder. Three weeks to migrate, huge operational difference, plus $20,000, $18,000 saved annually. We work in dollars because we're a remote first company. And, uh, but yeah, saved annually on contractors, which is really helpful to us. We finally owned our website design process internally. 85% uh, reduction in team uh, in, in the time to deliver new pages, which is fantastic. And overall, this translated into a 7 to 10x efficiency team-wide, which is awesome. And primarily, this is because of being design-led. Now, of course, right, because devs stayed building, on, you know, building the application, which is way better use of their time, no doubt. And our entire design team, which is just three of us, including myself, we own website. In fact, the whole funnel design process, A to B, from your ads to your landing page to the product, which is how it should be. Uh, and further, this trickled into uh, marketing impacts, which is you know, we're able to now quickly launch landing pages, test pricing discounts. We're building landing pages iteratively, you know, changing it every almost on a daily occurrence for us. You know, we, 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 make, we make these decisions quite frequently since moving to Framer, which is powerful. Um, and on top of that, now we can easily set up event pages. We have sort of the embed component, paste the code on the embed component you've got from your you know, webinar platform. You've, you've got a webinar registration page. We're integrating lead capture really easy. Of course, Framer recently launched their native forms, which is amazing. We personally use Magic Form, which is a custom component built by someone in the Framer, Joris, but in the Framer community. Awesome founder, by the way. What was really cool about Joris is that just through a Twitter chat, he actually integrated our own marketing, uh, well, not our own, but the marketing tool that we actually use, Brevo. Uh, and yeah, it made the integration just for us. And that's a huge advantage for us because now we're skipping and cutting out that Zapier cost, which is great. And so we use uh, Magic Form. But yeah, there's a lot of form support in the Framer community. This has resulted in a 2x increase in marketing campaigns over the, the last, I'd say, since January, which is amazing. Um, and a bonus impact is that we launched a no-code marketplace, which is super cool. Now, this is something we always wanted to do before Framer. But we kind of avoided it because of the kind of technical, like I, the development was going to be take too much time and we had bigger priorities on our application. But with Framer, we did it by ourselves without code by combining two CMSs, one for the creator, one for the, template, the templates themselves and connecting those two. And what this has resulted in is powerful SEO, programmatic SEO benefits because now our users are generating the content for us via the templates and the descriptions, which are rich in keywords, which is powerful. Uh, and in fact, now if you type something like Amazon product image gallery template, we will be on that top search result. Uh, similarly, if you type Instagram carousel template kit, you will find us on quite high in the search result, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully we're maintain, maintaining that ranking. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're being discovered in top search results because of this effort, which is great. So summary of benefits. Um, Operations saved $18,000, 20 $10x blended efficiency team-wide by being design-led. SEO maintained, maintained organic graphic, uh, traffic, graphic traffic overall with minimal content efforts. Marketing, we launched twice as many campaigns, plus we, have, we recently launched a high volume traffic template marketplace. But I think something that's really important to highlight with all of this is the fact that as a team with Framer, we just experience pure delight. Like, I don't know how, that, that's a factor that you can't describe in the sense that 
Some days as a team, we come on Monday, we're a remote first company, we're having Monday meetings, uh, and we're on a call and we're talking, discussing company growth stuff, and we'll be like, how about we design a couple of framer templates this week? <laughs> you know? Because it's just so much fun, and seeing people use those templates is so fulfilling and satisfying. Uh, Design-led for websites is definitely the future. Look, majority of websites are front-facing marketing sites, I'd say, right? Um, no doubt, marketing funnels are designed. And you know, you, from ad to landing page, all the way to you know, the launch of the product, ma designers should own this, and perhaps in collaboration with marketers. In fact, I believe designers are great at solving marketing problems. You know, we see this all the time. Uh, and design is, of course, not just about aesthetics. It's about deep problem solving. And also, the other side of it is how developers, I know there's a few developers in the house who spoke earlier. Um, a lot of developers look at Frame and they feel some, sometimes disempowered. And I believe this is not true. This shouldn't be the case. Because in fact, if anything, this empowers development teams because they can focus on the stuff that no one can do, which is you know, they are the heroes of the complex stuff, you know, the apps and custom code. That's where their focus should be. And, that's how it should be. Thank you, guys. That's a wrap for me. Uh, yeah, if you want to connect, I'm across all these platforms with that handle. Um, yeah, if you're on Indie Hack as well, I'm on, I'm, I'm on there too. But yeah, thank you so much. I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>
look, it's this infinite canvas workflow. If, if you could do that, maybe there's, there's an opportunity. But even if Webflow was to do that, the, the whole tooling is way too complicated. And what Frame has been really good at is distilling all these complex ideas into such pristine simplicity. So and I don't know if anyone can match that, honestly. I can't, I can't see it. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Um, I use Spring quite a lot as well. And sometimes I don't actually start on Figma, I just jump. Straight to Framer, yeah. We do that too, yeah. Um, have you ever tried that in terms of like, I know that you're using the templates and all that. Yeah. So is your team's process always Figma to Framer, or you try to, do, to actually build things on Framer without even going to Figma? Yeah, that's a good question. In the beginning, we did, um, just because we had our whole design system on Figma. But now we're just designing straight on, on Framer. Um, yeah, like, why not? Because it's still a free-form canvas. It doesn't make sense. It feels redundant now to use Figma. And, and so what we do use Figma for is more like the app prototyping and, and that side of things. But it's really funny because we're having this discussion. We, after, after speaking to the Framer team, um, Jure, who, who's uh, heads uh, marketing, he said that Framer actually uses Framer. <laughs> this is a funny sentence, but Framer uses Framer to build Framer, <laughs> right? So as in their design, their des the, as in they don't actually build the product, but they design Framer's interface on Framer. That's what they said. And, and after hearing that, I was like, it would be so cool if we design Glorify on Framer, right? Because you hit publish and it's like, a li live interactable thing, it interactive thing. So yeah, so I definitely agree with you there. But I think you had a question, didn't you? Yeah, you go for it. What do you think of the biggest limitation of Framer at the moment? <sighs> you know, I've become a bit of a fanboy, so it's, <laughs> I'll be honest. But it's weird because every time we had a limitation, we'd poke around the community and someone solved it. Like there's a custom component out there that does what we need. Um, let me try to be honest about this. Let's see if there's a limitation. <laughs> I'll close my ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is. Oh, man. Go for it. Yes. You're right. You're right. It's coming. It is coming. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't think of anything <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Maybe when we're chatting later. Go for it, brother. Yeah, yeah, go for sure. Okay, so it sounds like um, your designer is slowly fading away from the Figma to Framer. Mm -hmm. So that means, obviously, there is a limitation point where <coughs> that's why there was a thing that Framer brought in yeah, to kind of uh, people who doesn't code handle the task without coding design task. Uh, but I know there is opportunity if you have a React knowledge or stuff like this, mm -hmm. you can boost it up framer pretty much with anything, yeah? Uh, with the hand coding and stuff like that. Yeah. So you're saying your designers are slowly converting to developers? Uh, it, what's the question? So the designers are? Slowly converting to the developers. I wouldn't say so. Like, I don't think any of our design team, myself included, by the way, uh, where. I'd love to learn code personally. I was speaking to someone earlier about code, and I'd love to learn, and I think I could learn, but I, it's, it's just a little bit over our wheelhouse at this stage. Because yeah. there is a limit on everything. 100%, Very yeah. Well framed, whatever, yeah. Uh, but most of the time, if you want to build something more complex, you need to have a oh, yeah. bunch of developers behind you. you know? 100%, percent. And, and that's how we build the application. For it, like yeah. Glorify as a graphic design tool, we'd be lost without our dev team. But the advantage we have is the fact that uh, developers can actually you know, focus on building what, what's important, and we can work on the website, which is, I think should be led by marketers, because it's a vi visual first um, asset versus like a technical asset, unless you're building like a very complex system on it, like maybe like some kind of e-commerce market. But even then, I'm seeing a lot of components roll out for e-commerce too that does a lot of the no-code stuff for you without having to code. So yeah, but I think I'm out of time. Like uh, maybe, can, can, Chris, what's the next step? Because there's, there's some other questions coming in, but.
No, no. Okay. Sorry, we'll take a couple more. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, Any, anyone else? Or? Yeah, go for it, buddy. Yeah, I was going to say, um, how do you handle like, custom components and custom overrides? Do you get your developers to do that? Or yeah. Do you use, like, That's a good question. Um, so far, uh, in Glorify, my start Glorify, we haven't had to deal with that. Uh, we found a component in the community that a developer has actually built for, for, for the community. But I, I run another bootstrap company called Blitzit, and um, it's like a productivity tool. And there, we actually, uh, our dev who works on the product actually built some custom components for the site because we're tying in the product a little bit with the site. Just to try, it's like API, just to transfer some data from product to site. That's it. Um, so, yeah, that's as far as we've gone so far. So, yeah, go, go for it. Following up with that, are, yeah. have you ever tried using GPT or any other AI tool? I've heard of people using it. In fact, there's someone's put a product out there that, you know, maybe he's in this room, I don't know, but um, you can literally go to the product and type out what you want. It'll spit out the code. So it's pretty cool, right? Um, but yeah, I haven't. I haven't used it, no. I might try sometime, maybe. But as, to, as far as custom overrides, by the way, but just to give you the clear use case for Blitz at the site, why we use it. Not Blitz, um, yeah, so I launched a template called Wisdom, which is like a documentation template. And in that template, I wanted command K, pull up search. So I got him to build, give me the custom override for that. And also, mm. I wanted hot links on the documentation page to trigger for every H2 on that article and he made that so that was that's as far as we've gone so far you know funny enough the yeah. command k actually used gpt to do the exact thing oh is it for a custom component yes oh no way that's cool that's cool, cool. awesome we'll leave you there, but Omar's around thanks guys all afternoon so yeah come and pick his brain for more questions but um yeah next we've got Lloyd.